Russian officials and militias in East Ukraine, but held off putting them in place to give peace talks a chance. I'm now joined by the president of the French-Russian Trade and Industry Chamber, Emmanuel Kide, to discuss uh, the effects of such a move uh, so far. Thank you very much for coming on on such an important day for international news here, Emmanuel. Uh, how hard has Russia been hit to this point by the international sanctions over the crisis in Ukraine? It has been uh, hard and it has been difficult uh, for Russia because at first, of course, the, the sanction did not hit them, but with time it did. Actually, there is one sanction which is extremely important. And it's the one re, uh, relating to the financing, where Russian bank could not at first refinance themselves in US dollars for more than 90 days, and now it's down to 30 days. And that's an asphyxia of the Russian economy, and of course it has effect. Mm. Certainly we understand the, the, the sheer importance of, of, uh, of the economic relationship between Europe and of course with Russia. Uh, you're sitting with me now here in the RT International Studios here in Moscow. You are watching Vladimir Putin's uh, statement just now. What did you make of what the Russian president had to say? Well, I'm very hopeful that uh, uh, this uh, treaty, I don't know if it's a peace treaty yet, but this treaty will uh, work. Uh, they are talking about a ceasefire, that the most important thing is right now, they are talking a ceasefire starting at midnight to, today, and I certainly hope it's going to work. We need peace in Ukraine. Good for business, do you think? It's very good for business, it's very good for Russia, it's very good for Ukraine. It's what uh, right now we all need here. We understand that uh, you know, there's damage has been done to the European economy, damage has been done to the Russian economy also, albeit with the combination of, uh, of the oil prices as well. Uh, just last hour, I spoke with uh, Miloslav Ransdorf, a Czech MEP, and he was saying that ultimately, at the end of the day, um, European interests don't reflect that of some of its Western partners, uh, citing external influence or perhaps disturbance uh, with the relationship between Russia and Europe. Who stands to gain the most and who stands to lose the most when it comes to the economic sanctions? between Europe and Russia? Russia um, is being hit by the sanction from Europe, but also from the one uh, from the US. Uh, actually, uh, we have been seeing for months uh, uh, that uh, we need to be very careful as European uh, uh, for uh, any sanction because any economical sanction to Europe, uh, to Russia, will turn and will have a boomerang effect to uh, the EU economy. Uh, and it's exactly what happened. We could see that actually uh, um, trade between the EU and Russia went down by about 20%, uh, which eats Russia, but eats a lot, of course, the EU economy. Meanwhile, uh, um, the, the trade with the US has increased by 17%. If I can, Emmanuel, I'll just jump in for a moment here. You're bringing up some very important facts and figures, but we're just showing, again, live pictures here of the Independence Palace in Minsk after approximately 17 hours of what were termed to be very nervous peace talks going on there uh, between the leaders of Russia, Ukraine, France and Germany. Uh, you could see uh, the, the leaders there as we're just losing a bit of the picture here. Uh, 17 plus hours of peace negotiations. The Russian president so far, the only one to come out and address the media, addressing the press, saying that he hopes that as of a uh, Midnight on February the 15th, a ceasefire will come into effect and that all parties will work to stop the bloodshed and a true political process will be the way forward. As I'm talking here with Emmanuel Kide, uh, it, it turns out uh, when it comes to the French-Russian trade and industry chamber that you are a part of, you understand the value, the, the, the billions if not trillions of euros that are exchanged on an annual basis between Russia and the EU. Now with what's been happened with these peace talks in Minsk, what can you forecast as the next hopeful step? that peace will last. Uh, but if I may say something about François Hollande and Angela Merkel, I'm extremely glad and extremely actually proud that uh, both of them uh, came uh, to Minsk uh, to help on this uh, very important process, which I think could not have been concluded uh, without uh, both of them. So if this is su successful, uh, we can uh, probably hope for uh, any EU sanction to be lifted. Uh, and of course, Russian uh, sanction uh, to the EU being lifted. And then uh, business starting again. And why is it important? We could say, well, uh, it's business. But why is it important? Because the more relationship we will have between Russia and the EU or the EU and Russia, the more it will help uh, in uh, modernizing uh, um, uh, Russia, first of all, and of course, uh, uh, EU and uh, making peace with the EU. 
Now, we understand here, Emmanuel, as, as you and I are talking, it just came out about an hour or so ago that uh, tentatively the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has reached a staff level agreement with Ukraine on a four year program of a $17.5 billion loan. That'll trump up loans to $40 billion for Ukraine. Uh, you, as a businessman at heart, how do you view that? Well, I Ukraine need the money anyway, so uh, without money they will not succeed. But I understand that this loan is uh, also linked to some very important reform that uh, Ukraine needs to do. And, uh, and there is a lot of reform which well, needs And when to you be say done. reform that Ukraine needs to do, you're, you're referring to that uh, of the RADA perhaps, uh, politicians perhaps? Or uh, where is the money going or where would it go? Uh, it, it's uh, probably economical uh, uh, reforms. Uh, uh, it will have a social impact. Uh, and, and uh, probably in st some institutional reform also, but that's uh, another question. What do you think about the reaction of the stock markets today? And, and in effect, what do you think the ruble uh, might do, having lost so much of its power in recent months? I don't know. I never understand uh, what uh, currency does. So I don't know what the ruble will do. The, the, uh, the devaluation of the ruble uh, so far has been very much linked to the price of oil. Mm. Uh, so would uh, today has an impact on the ruble? Probably, but I think very limited. All right, Emmanuel Kide, the president of the French-Russian Trade and Industry Chamber, uh, thanks for coming in here to RT International on such an important day. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and we will be back after a very short break. It's RT International, live from Moscow.